So welcome, graphics cards are coming down in price, or have come already, which is good news actually. And people are more and more getting into building their PCs now and wondering what graphics card should I get? As a creator especially, you may be video editor, photographer, some kind of 3D modeler. What type of graphics card should you get and which one is the best or the worst? So in here I have the ASUS TUF RTX 1390, the best of what Nvidia offers at the moment. Until they actually release the 3090 Ti, but until then that's the best. And then on this side I have the ASUS RTX 3050 Dual, the lowest of 3000 series RTX cards. Now, what's the actual difference? How much is the performance difference in creative applications? Let's find out. Motion Array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster. Motion Array has over 600,000 premium quality templates, presets, plugins, music and sound effects, stock video and photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs. Pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want. And enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. By the way, if you are a creator who uses Adobe Creative Cloud, then whichever ASUS card you are buying, ASUS gives you actually one month for free Creative Cloud membership. And this can be redeemed even if you have Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. So both of these cards have been tested on the same test bench setup. We're running the ASUS B660 Creator D4 motherboard. We're running the Intel i7-12700 CPU, two times 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 MHz CL18 of Kingston Fury Beast RGB. The cooler is the Deepcool Castle EX360 white, and the SSD is Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte version. All of these components are in the Deepcool CK560WH case and the side panel is open. I have also added some extra fans but basically this is the photographer's build video if you haven't seen that PC that we built. It's that same PC but this is my GPU bench setup now. So let's have a look at some of the specs then of these two cards. Uh, the GPUs inside there are obviously different. One of them is GA106 and GA102 but some of the other differences that we have for these two cards. We can see that the 3090 has four times more CUDA cores, 10,496, four times more TMUs, tensor cores, RT cores, and so on. And the video memory is a bit different as well. This is GDDR6X, whereas the 3050 is just GDDR6. The 3090 has three times the video memory, and the memory bus is 384 rather than 128 on the left side over here. This is X16 PCIe 4.0, you know, bus interface. And then this is X8 PCIe Gen 4. The TDP on this is 350 and 130 on the RTX 3050. In terms of the MSRP price, the RTX 3090 is about six times more expensive, but at the moment, current market situations looks like this might be roughly around 5.2 times more expensive on the RTX 3090. Let's have a look at the GPU temperatures and the actual cooling capabilities. One of them runs at 130 watts, the other one 350 watts. Now, in order to calculate the actual temperature, temperature of the GPU inside your case, what you can do is just take the temperature that I'm giving you after 30 minutes once it's warmed up and then add the ambient temperature in your house or room, then you get the GPU temperature in your environment because the GPU temperature has been measured over ambient. So the 30 minute temp is 44.8 on the RTX 3090, very well cooled and it can keep its, uh, you know, power limit on the control and then the hotspot is 55.1. An RTX 3050 is just slightly lower, a few degrees lower, 42.5 and 54.5 on the 3050. Now the interesting point over here is to say that if you see any RTX 3050 cars that have like a bigger cooler, like three fan cooler, then you absolutely don't need this. This is a two 
you know, fan cooler, like one of the lowest coolers. And this is even OC'd a little bit. It runs higher clock speeds that are from the factory, you know, the reference card, but the cooler is still able to keep it cooled down. So you don't really need a massive cooler for the RTX 3050, but the 3090, you really do. So then let's have a look at Geekbench 5 GPU benchmarks over here, the CUDA, OpenCL and Vulkan scores. The RTX 3090 is three, 137% better than the RTX 3050. In OpenCL, it's 303% better, and in Vulcan Score, it's 217% better. About 2 to 3.3 times better in terms of that benchmark. Moving on to Blender, in here you can see the RTX 3090 is shining again, and we have 360% better in Monster Scene, 340% better in Junk Shop Scene, and 350 percent better in classroom scene bear in mind that these numbers are samples per minute so the higher it is the better and this is blender 3.1 one of the latest blender versions next of all adobe photoshop as you can see in here we have some interesting results the rtx 3090 is about two percent or 2.3 percent faster than the 3050 really not a big difference at all in fact just above the margin of error i would say two percent is you know the margin of error if if it's above that you know you kind of can say that this is faster but for photographers the RTX 3090 as you can see is absolute overkill RTX 3050 is the card that you should go for and you're really not gonna see any performance difference between the lowest and the highest end cards just if you're a photographer watching this you don't really need to spend that much on your graphics card pants ddr5 issues over here the test bench just crashed again and when looking at the lightroom benchmarks nothing to see here either all of the cards perform the same it doesn't give you any performance difference whether you're running the lowest or the highest end card in adobe lightroom now some video editing benchmarks adobe premiere pro the rtx 1390 is 31 percent faster than the rtx 3050 in the extended overall score and standard overall about 29.7 percent faster but as you can see most of the results or differences actually come from the effects and gpu score so if you're using a lot of color grading effects like lumetri color or some other gpu accelerated you know effects then the rtx 3090 is much better at doing that but if we're looking at the standard live playback score only 22 percent faster or extended live playback score 18 percent faster extended export score only seven or standard export only one percent faster so if you're exporting and you want to use the nvenc encoders inside you know these cards then the rtx 3050 keeps up as much as the 3090 here on this premiere pro test which is very very interesting but then overall you know if you want somewhere best bang for buck then it's somewhere in the middle you know 3070 3070 ti something like that but as you can see in my testing but these two cards aren't that far apart i do want to mention that the difference could be a little bit higher if i had the best cpu for premiere pro like if it was running something like the threadripper pro 5995 wx processor because then the most load will be taken off the cpu and then most load will be on the gpu and then you might be seeing a little bit of a bigger difference but still not like a huge difference but just to note that the difference could be a little bit bigger if we had the best cpu platform for this uh, premiere pro benchmark just so that we're not bottlenecked by the cpu which we are in this case adobe after effects we can see the rtx 3090 is only 8.7 percent faster yet about five times as expensive as the 3050 so as you can see a lot of the video creators in the adobe suite like premiere pro and after effects you might not need that big of a graphics card depending on you know which effects you're using and how high end you are and so on but if you're doing simple stuff not so much of the effects the rtx 3050 is very good better to put your budget on the cpu now davinci resolve the rtx 3090 is 38 percent faster over here and it's a bigger gap than on the premiere pro benchmark because uh, davinci resolve can utilize the graphics card more than premiere pro so it's good to see that over here but the GPU effects, if you want to do that, it's 3.2 times faster on the RTX 3090 than on the RTX 3050. But general overall score like Fusion doesn't add much. 4K media is a little bit better on the RTX 3090 and so is the 8K media. But overall score, we're roughly averaging about 
40 or 38 percent faster on the RTX 3090. When looking at V-Ray we can see that the RTX 3090 is 378 percent faster or roughly about 3.8 times faster than the 3050 on the CUDA score and about 3.8 times faster on the RTX score which is pretty good scaling actually if you look at that if you remember from the beginning it's got about four times the amount of RT cores, tensor cores, TMUs and CUDA cores but now we can see that in V-Ray where you actually use utilize all of that stuff it is roughly pushing four times faster with 3.8 so there's only a marginable loss in terms of the scaling here but it scales very very well so you can expect like all the middle cards to just slot roughly in there so then in conclusion what is the difference between the best and the worst graphics cards as you can see in some of the situations and cases the difference is literally not noticeable for example, if you are a photographer, then having the highest end graphics card, you're really not going to benefit anything at all, almost anything at all, because you get 2% increase. So you're not really going to get any performance difference in your Photoshop, Lightroom or any other applications that might use the graphics cards. Really put your budget on the CPU. Now on the video editors, as we can see, we can get up to 40%, about 30 to 40% difference between the best and the worst graphics cards, depending how much you're doing like crazy multi-layer color grading with masks and so on. If you're just doing, you know, slipping a LUT on or doing some kind of vlog style where you're doing just simple color grade, then even the RTX 3050 will be completely fine for you. As you can see, the 3090 isn't four times or five times as good in video editing as the RTX 3050. So depending on your budget, which card you want to pick up, you know, just kind of scale it somewhere. All the other cards will be somewhere in the middle, but this is roughly what you can expect. Although I want to say if you're using more than 6K, you know 6k or 8k media and you're using editing with that type of codex and resolution then i highly recommend rdx 3080 or higher which has more than 10 gigabytes of vram because when you're editing you know larger resolutions then you actually need more video memory as well which this rtx 3090 has much more than this it's three times you know 24 and 8. in terms of 3d modeling and 3d rendering like blender and v-ray and so on there you really see the difference if you're doing any type of animation or 3d work then the rtx 3090 is much better than the 3050. there we can really see the difference between those big rt cores and the gddrc 6x memory and memory bus and as you can see it scales very very well like literally four or five times like roughly between three or four times better than the RTX 3050 so the scaling is much better in those applications so then if you want to pick up any of these cards or some other cards I'm gonna leave them linked below and you know maybe some deals even there so check out the description below if you want to pick up any of the graphics cards as always thanks guys for watching likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and I'll meet you in the comment section below which graphics cards would you like me to compare to each other next let's find out bye bye